Welcome everyone to a special Directed IRA webinar and Directed IRA podcast. This is a co-production from Directed IRA Studios. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Matt Sorensen, CEO of Directed IRA, joined by the great and powerful Aaron Halderman, Chief Operating Officer here. Today is a great yeah. webinar. I'm excited because I have questions I want answered. So, you know, we're not like Congress where we can pull all the CEOs of the banks in front of us to come testify, but we got one, okay? We got Jonathan Miller, a good friend of ours, um, heck of a skier, by the way. Ooh, yeah. um, but, uh, but Jonathan, CEO of Titan Bank, and we thought it'd be great to have him on to talk about what's going on in banking. Answer a lot of the questions we started getting last week. My email started blowing up. Mm -hmm. Yours did, I'm sure. Over Jonathan, the weekend. You've Oof. had a fun, I'm like last, you know, 10 days, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, we're just going to dive into this. Remember, it's recorded, as Aaron mentioned, so you'll be able to catch this later. Um, and we're going to let a lot of questions um, are going to, yeah. we're going to pose to Jonathan from mm -hmm. you. We've got our own set of questions, but um, we want to get some of your questions answered as well. So um, let's kick it off, Jonathan. I mean, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, maybe Titan Bank. And so people have some perspective of you. We know that you know your stuff, but um, why don't you tell a little about everybody about yourself? Just to give a quick overview on Titan Bank, we're a 116 year old national bank. We're based in Texas. We bank uh, customers around the country and have a special focus on self-directed retirement plans. We, we work with hundreds of small businesses or thousands, tens of thousands of small businesses, I should say, but self-directed um, uh, has been an area that we've built a special capacity around. Uh, we have incredible customer support and really good technology. Awesome. And that's why we've loved them for all those reasons right yep. there. That was funny when you said 116 years. I'm like, okay, Titan Bank has lasted through the Great Depression, mm -hmm. World War One and Two, <laughs> okay, like the financial crisis. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's a. And I keep having people ask me like, when did I start it? Like, and I was like, well, <laughs> it existed before I was. It's been born. a little. It's been a little while. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, thanks for, so much for being on and taking time out of your schedule. I know things have just been pretty wild and crazy out there. And so that's why we wanted to pull this kind of like, you know, live webinar together today. Yeah. Okay. Let's just tee it off. I think everyone's been hearing the headlines, of course, you know, two pretty large significant banks go into the FDIC somewhere on the brink, but what do you think from like the investor business owner, what should they be thinking about right now when they're thinking about their banking and their bank accounts? Maybe try to put this in perspective from the beginning and and I, I don't know. I was trying to frame it myself and I'm like, I don't know. Ask Jonathan, let him frame it. He there's, knows a, better. there's a, there's a lot going on. The, the most, the most interesting thing is usually nobody cares about this banks, utility, they're all, <laughs> they're all commodity. It's like, you just go to the bank, your money's fine. And nobody, nobody thinks about it about once yeah. every 15 years. Uh, all of a sudden everyone remembers. Yes. Like, these banks are all different and there are differences between them and also which bank you use and how you set it up is an important financial decision. Mm. People don't think about that until there's a crisis and then all of a sudden they're panicked that their money might go away. Um, so we're in, we're definitely in one of those time periods right now and we're still in it. Uh, today was another bad day for banks. Uh, where one of the biggest banks in the country, First Republic, mm -hmm. is kind of teetering if they're going to survive or not. Yeah. So help me if I'm an investor, whether I'm self-directing, I'm a real estate investor, I'm a business owner. Like, I think those are the questions I started getting. Some of them hold cash. Let's mm -hmm. just start talking about that. Everybody's, of course, concerned about their deposits. Over 250 grand. If you're a small business owner, your payroll, your just regular operating business, if you got like 10 employees, you could be holding 250 grand more mm -hmm. cash. It's not just like big corporate America. Um, so our, a lot of our self-directed retirement accounts, you know, in between deals and transactions are holding more cash than that. So what, what, what advice would you give them about their situation? And maybe let's explain some stuff about the FDIC insurance. Sure. Well, let, why don't we step back for a moment and talk about FDIC as you suggested. Yeah, love it. Um, so the FDIC insurance was put in place in the 1930s after the bank runs um, and, and nobody has lost a penny of FDIC insured money uh, since then. So that's a great yeah. thing our country did. Um, it was the first country that did this and it was very successful for our banking system and stability in, in the country. 
uh, FDIC insurance works in that every tax ID number that is at a bank account with an account yeah. is insured up to $250,000. So that means if you're an individual and you have uh, a bank account for your, your uh, social security number is insured up to $250,000. And if you have a, if you're a company and you have an EIN number or a fund or an LLC yeah. or a trust, um, that EIN number is insured up to $250,000. Um, so important things to note, if, if these are your personal accounts and it's a joint account, so maybe you have yeah. yourself and a spouse on the account, that's wow. $500,000 because it's you know two EIN numbers in the account. Um, Doubled up, okay, but, that's fair. What, what people often ask me is, okay, so can I get six accounts at the bank all with the same tax ID number and does that give me 1.5 million? And the answer is no, uh, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's, it, it's per institution. So um, sometimes- So we'll let me ask you that, Jonathan. So I could have, so it's not that I get 250,000 FDIC insurance per EIN. And I like how you said that, because that includes your, you personally, your social, your LLC within EIN. So let's say I've got a, a personal bank account at Titan Bank and I got an IRA LLC at Titan Bank. Um, those are each separate. I got 250 FDIC insurance on both of those, right? But then let's say I'm also at Bank of America with another personal account. Same social security number, but I'm since it's a different institution, I'm getting another 250,000 of FDIC insurance. Exactly. Okay, all right. And that's 100% that's correct. Um, or if you had a, let's say for instance, you had, a company at our bank or, uh, you know, an LLC that for some reason owned another LLC. And this yeah. sometimes happens for structuring uh, yep. purposes. Uh, that's 500,000 if they have different EIN numbers, which they would. Okay. Got it. So okay. oftentimes we have business owners with us that have a variety of real estate deals going and each one is in their own LLC. And, and we advise them that to kind of minimize their risk, not necessarily on the banking side, also on litigation, yeah. just to, you know, yeah. uh, minimize like risk. An attorney. And, that, yeah. and that'll give you a 250 uh, for, e for each one of those. So there are, there are ways to, um, you know, take advantage of this free insurance that, that we get, um, that actually the banks pay for, uh, the FDIC yeah. insurance. It's not taxpayer funded. I, I pay for it, Yeah, uh, but there's ways to take advantage of it and maximize it. And you should be smart about that. So just to, to want to make sure too, because we've already got a ton of those questions coming in. That is that a combination of then all accounts. So if they had two checkings and two savings to be a, a combination of all that, it's not, not per account, it's per tax ID or social, correct? It's per tax ID per regulated institution. Okay. So you know, if you, if you like, that. like, like, uh, like Matt said, if you happen to have uh, an account with Titan bank uh, under an EIN number for your LLC, and then you, and then God forget, forbid you have the same account uh, at uh, bank of America. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, for, uh, for example's but that, sake, but that would give you another uh, 250,000. Um, and as long as it's with regulated uh, FDIC insured institution, um, you'd be okay uh, in that in that case. And that's all part of the rules. And that's how yeah. uh, that's how it works. So we have some like pretty sophisticated, you know, people that <laughs> I think it's just the crowd. Like when you self direct, you just get a little bit yeah, more creative. They're entrepreneurial. Yeah, you creative. Just, you know, I love it. So let's go back on the institution. So I got two questions in here and they were about, okay, what if there's a subsidiary of another institution? I got, you know, holding company, one institution, I got a subsidiary, another institution. Does that matter? Is it just as long as they're separate period? It's as long as they have separate EINs. Okay, yeah, just yeah. remember, it's all about the tax ID. So when the FDIC comes in, all they do is they just look at a big database of all the tax IDs in that bank. And they don't care how many accounts make up that one tax ID. They'll just look at how many deposits does each one of these tax IDs have at 
uh, whatever, you know, uh, Silicon Valley Bank or whatever the bank is. And they'll say, we cover the first 250 of that tax ID. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's uh, so you could nest it as long as the different tax IDs. And there is a little proviso. The FDIC says you can't just create entities purely for the purpose of getting FDIC insurance. So these, yeah. there has to be some reason these entities exist other than getting, getting the insurance. I'll just put out the exception case there. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Which most people don't know. Um, but apart from that, and- But let me pause you there, because even as we, you know, we have customers, and I know you do, that have their, you know, their per, their business bank account with Titan, an IRLC with Titan, let's say, or a solo 401k there, or maybe someone picked another institution, doesn't matter. Uh, but those are all separate EINs, your social, your business, personal business, your IRA LLC, I mean, your solo 401k, we get a separate EIN for your solo 401k. I know some people don't actually do that. Some other providers, but we actually do that. This is, there's a tax reason we do that, but also apparently a benefit on the, um, on your FDIC insurance. So they're getting 250 in each one of those little buckets because they have the separate tax ID or EIN. Correct. That, that's awesome. Correct. And and we've seen some providers that set it up that we we advise against, but they set it up where they'll use, you know, on, on some types of accounts uh, that are really entities, but they'll use the social security number. And yeah. like that's not a good idea for all yeah. for all kinds of reasons, but one of them is for the FDIC insurance. Um, so I think you get the way that you have structured it uh, for your clients is very smart and protects them against all kinds of risks. Um uh, there are, so we have customers with in excess of a hundred million at our bank yeah. um, and in, in liquid deposits. Uh, most of them know our bank very well. And frankly, it's not a concern, uh, these things, but uh, we do have some large uh, individual customers or institutions um, that want in excess of $250,000. So we have a tool to do that as well. Mm -hmm. We're able to give, um, automatically up to about $150 million of FDIC insurance. How do we, how do we do this? I don't want to confuse people here, but yeah. <laughs> we, we, we can very seamlessly spread um, the funds out in the background amongst thousands of banks around the U.S. through a network that we use called Intrify that other banks subscribe to as well. So we're not the only bank that does it. We just make it, we just make it easier on our customers. Um, and we can also provide uh, insurance in excess of that um, through through some structures that we have. And I only say that because some of your customers are very sophisticated sure. and they're already thinking, OK, so how do I get around these rules? And there's yeah. tools in place that actually allow you to extend that insurance um, if you want to put the work in to do it. Well, I think that's a great tool. I think a lot of people are familiar with that option. Um because right now, a lot of people are holding cash. Mm -hmm. They really are. You know, they're, they're especially self-directed investors. They're waiting for a deal. They're looking for the next opportunity. I had one client said, I've got my vulture fund ready to go. I'm just waiting for something to you know, kill on the side of the road to go, to go invest in. Um, and, um, and, but in the meantime, how do I protect that cash? And it sounds like this type of program, I got more than 250. I'm a little spooked of what's going on out there in the banking world. I can actually get this FDIC insurance. I mean, is there a fee for that? Or are you guys making money on the deposit? So we, there's no fee or like how does it we cost? Don't, we don't charge a fee for that. We just, I give it as, okay. a, it costs us a little bit. I give it as a complimentary service. My challenge in this period, so as a bank, we have almost 40% of our assets in liquid cash at the Federal Reserve, which is one of the highest percentages in the country. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're about as secure a bank as you can get, but it's tough for me because people, if somebody calls me and, and says that the Silicon Valley bank uh, CEO said that the Friday he got taken over <laughs> right. the, the, the signature bank uh, CEO said that on Friday as well. And then Sunday he doesn't have a job and they don't have a bank anymore. So what it's yeah. been, if somebody really has questions instead of trying to make them an expert on banking it's much easier for me to say, here's the situation for the bank, but don't even worry about this. I'll just give this to you for free if you really yeah. care about it. The, the main thing, though, is we try to make sure that the customers, 
if we put it in place, we try to do it for customers since it's a little bit extra paperwork and a little bit extra work for them actually have more than $250,000 with us because if they don't, they never had any risk anyways. They're, it doesn't help them. Uh, but if it's a real concern or for their businesses or they're managing other people's money and they have a lot of it and they're concerned about that, we're, we're more than happy to give a free solution um, to help them out. Okay. Jonathan, could you hit on just kind of the, and I, I want to come to hit on something with directed next. Um, so Titan Bank does have physical locations, but can you explain to kind of everybody what a, you know, a banking charter allows you to do and how it can operate, not just in those physical locations that you have? Some people are a little bit newer to, I'd say, 100% online banking or not having a branch that they can go drive, you know, 15 minutes and go see. Absolutely. So um, the government, the government uh, issued banking charters a long time ago. They haven't issued new ones uh, in, uh, in a long time. Um, and what the banking charter effectively allows us to do is accept funds and provide this FDIC insurance. Um, and it's very tough to, it's, be, it's tough to be able to buy a bank. Um, it's certainly tough to be able to create a new, a new bank. Um, when we've really, we mostly bank businesses. We do help, we do help individuals and we have uh, branches in Texas, but we, we bank individuals. And as we've talked, uh, we bank, uh, entities, um, in companies. And as we've talked to those customers, uh, what we've heard over and over again is I don't want to have to drive to a branch anymore. I don't want to have to drive to a branch to wait in line, have stale coffee, open up an account, talk to a loan officer there that doesn't know anything and is trying to sell me something that I don't want. I definitely don't want to have to drive to a, a bank uh, to send a wire or send an ACH or, or to validate something. Um, I was hearing it today uh, that at Bank of America, you can't you can't send a wire unless you over a five hundred thousand dollars unless you go there in person. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of customers need to buy a building or do business transaction, and it's over it's over half a million dollars. So what we've really focused on was investing heavily into technology. We can allow uh, customers to set up uh, new accounts in roughly about five or ten minutes online. Love it. Uh, all of the wires are done online. If you want to have multiple people approve wires, we have all kinds of security settings in there that you can set it up that two people have to approve a wire, three people have to approve a wire, a wire over $1,000 has to be approved by two people, but under that, you know, somebody can do themselves. Um, and we've put all kinds of resources into, instead of spending money on branches, how do we have seamless integration with QuickBooks? How do we um, have all yeah. types of features with reporting that makes your life easier? And, and we keep hearing from customers more and more again, yet we want more technology. We want that to be the focus and we don't want to have to drive into a branch. Thanks for that explanation. I just had, um, we, we had somebody, um, we've gotten a lot of calls incoming. We just had a few mm -hmm. questions come in on directed IRA, um, where we keep, you know, our customers funds yeah. for their retirement accounts. What's the FDIC insurance? How does that yeah. work? No. So I'll explain that for directed. So, you know, at directed, so we're not a bank where we're a depository institution. We're a financial institution regulated and such. We're able to get what's called pass-through FDIC insurance from the banks we deposit funds with. So many, of you know, on our documents, we have Wells Fargo and there's a bunch of other banks that we use for cash, but those are all pat none of the problem banks you've heard of. <laughs> but, um, but these are institutions where we get passed through FDIC insurance because we have a separate accounting mm -hmm. for your account here. And, but you're getting 250,000 max. Okay. So, and it's again, if you have two Roth IRAs here, it's still 250 because that's falling down to you individually on your social. If you got a solo K, you're probably going to get separate FDIC treatment there. Again, it's coming through as a pass through to the, to the underlying bank. So, um, so you have FDIC insurance here with your, if you have any uninvested cash here, it directed up to the 250, um, 250,000 limit as well. Now, those of you with IRA LLCs, in addition to that, if you have cash mm -hmm. here and an IRA LLC, it sounds like what Jonathan's saying, and I'm learning some of these FDIC rules for the EINs and stuff. Sounds like you'd have separate FDIC insurance there in your IRA LLC checking account versus what you'd have here with any cash we're holding. Um, so that's how it works with, with any uninvested cash here. It's called pass-through 
FDIC insurance that we get as a trust company because and there's certain requirements we have to fit when we go through our audits to pass on that. Um, but that's, that's how you're sitting here. So. Love it. Well, thank you for that. Um, okay. So let me kind of summarize a couple of key points, Jonathan, is um, that I love the separate EIN separate institution is getting you 250 a piece of FDIC insurance. For people that have more than 250, you know, maybe you got to split it between different banks. Is it maybe you got 500 or 750? You know, you might want to split it between a few banks. Um, but someone that's got millions, let's say, they don't want to have 10 bank accounts everywhere. You've got a solution already for that where we'll just basically park it with us and we do the work of getting it through a network of other institutions where you're, you have the 250. And depending on how much someone puts in, you guys source it out up to, I don't know, 100 million or whatever between the different banks in that network. Is that kind of what people need to know right now in terms of the FDIC insurance and maybe strategies? That I think the most important thing to know is if you're educated, there's ways that you can be 100% government protected easily. Okay. And, and, that's, and, and people that are actually logging into this webinar care. Most of the country doesn't until yeah. they lose their money or something like that happens. But um, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it's a, this is a manageable business process, a manageable risk that there, there's tools out there for, um, and is easy is easy to deal with. And once you get it set up, it's not complicated at all. You can see which funds are at other banks. You can see which funds are at Titan. And for yeah. instance, you have. $2 million in total and 250,000 is at Titan, but you need to send a million dollar wire. It goes through seamlessly and overnight we bring it back from the other banks and the computer systems do all of that. Okay, nice. Um, all right, you tell me if you got any, any questions yet. Um, we did, this was, you know, people are hearing about the, the bank term funding program. Um, I think that's the treasury FDIC program. I'm not sure who's really taking ownership of that right now, but what is that? What should people know about that? Sure. Um, yeah, it's a federal reserve program, uh, managed to the treasury, but if we, I guess if we step back, three banks have collapsed right now, yeah. um, all for, all for similar different types of banks, but for similar reasons, there's uh, initially, Silvergate Bank that was heavy into the cryptocurrency space. Uh, there's Silicon Valley Bank and then Signature Bank. Um, and all three had two things in common. The first was they took a lot of deposits in and they invested into bonds, mm. but they invested into long term bonds. Yeah. And At the worst rate, time. <laughs> At the worst time. Yeah. Uh, so, right when government, the government ran the printing press. Yeah. And all this cash gets printed. So guess where it goes? It goes into the banks. And then the banks have to do something with the money. And they're like, we'll just go into government bonds. That's very secure. Fannie Mae bonds, things like that. But then they got greedy and said, well, we want to buy some 20-year some bonds, some 30-year bonds. Um, and we're going to put a lot of our money in that. So to give you a perspective, what happened on, on a 30-year municipal bond um, when rates went up 400 basis points, that bond lost uh, 55% of its value. Yeah. Now, banks get to use uh, kind of a funky accounting that most, most people get to use, but there's all these special rules for banks. And that says if we put in a category called health to maturity, we can just count it at the original value. We don't have to count it at what it really went down to. Right. You got to hold that's it. Normally, that's yeah. normally fine, but they all had a second thing in common. They had very concentrated groups of depositors that were all related, that all knew each other, and most of which kept in more than $250,000. So when they all started talking to each other and saying, hey, this bank has no equity left and we might have a problem, the money flooded out. And then all of a sudden, the banks had to sell those bonds, mm -hmm. recognize the losses. So the accounting treat didn't help them anymore. And that's what ultimately put them out of business. So what the the bank term, that's my, I asked my mother to listen in. So that's the my most simple explanation yeah. <laughs> of, of what happened because I've had the question uh, uh, from her. Uh, that's a so great explanation. The bank term funding program, 
uh, takes the, the accounting treatment to the next level. It says, guess what? Not only can that be your treatment on paper, but for the next year, that let's say that $10 million bond that's now only worth four and a half million dollars that we talked about, mm -hmm. the government will lend the bank, they'll just give the bank $10 million against that bond as collateral. So they'll say, it's not just accounting treatment, we will just give you the liquidity mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and kind of kick the can down the road here um yeah. and 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 the problem out on a year if interest rates don't go down i don't know what happens but there's a term in banking called pretend to defend um <laughs> and uh and and i and i and i think kind of where where the government's thought is let's let's kind of head off a crisis right now let's push this out a year yeah and and, and then hopefully things will be more calm and something will have changed yeah so that was the issue is they were having to sell these assets, bonds, incur significant losses, deposits are flooding out. Um, and so the, the, is the FDIC that's running this or treasury? It's like a joint program. It, it, it I think it's the Fed, Fed? the Fed and treasury. Fed. It's, it's through yeah. the Fed, it's through the uh, Federal Reserve Banks um, that it okay. gets run, um, which is owned, by, which is coincidentally owned by the banks, the national banks like us. Um, yeah. So it, it, it all, the, the, uh, the actual rails of how this whole banking system works get a little bit convoluted, but the main thing is that it's giving banks liquidity, but ultimately if the banks, you know, if, if, if these depositors keep withdrawing money from any of these banks, uh, it creates a problem for them. And there's a, there's another yeah issue going on with First Republic right now, um, which is a great bank, but it's unfortunately in the same situation. Yeah. Um, well, I think really isn't the Fed's got another worry of everyone's just going to go to B of A, Chase, Wells, you know, they're going to just bank. go to all the big banks because they can get bailed out. You know, the government won't let them fail. And, you know, and, and those are the ones I think people have probably pulled money for, and a lot of them are probably gone to some of these bigger banks. So I think some of this program helps some of the midsize and smaller banks know that it might be the ones more likely to fail. This is a program that helps survival of these, of these banks. This is, yeah. this is like a tourniquet that's getting put in place right now. Yeah. And some of these banks, to, they need a mechanism to flood cash into these banks to try to keep them going. The, the very, the, the, in, in, to give the most simple explanation of how a bank works, is a bank, if you started a new bank from scratch, which, which you can't really do, but if you did, yeah. um, let's say you put in $10 million of actual equity. That means actual investor money, cash into that bank. You could take in $90 million of deposits. And you got to keep that one to 10 ratio um, yeah. in terms of equity to deposits, um, which, is, which is all great. But if you lose... Uh, 10 percent. If you lose on 10 percent of your loans, now you're bankrupt as a bank. So not only did you go below the one to 10 ratio, uh, but but uh, you, you literally have no equity left and you're bankrupt. Yeah. Um, the same thing happened. So every bank crisis that has ever happened to date has been for one of two reasons, uh, fraud or loan losses. This is I was talking to the Federal Reserve a little while ago. And they said they don't really know what to do because this is the first time they've ever seen a banking crisis that didn't involve those two things. Yeah. What happened in this case is the bonds went down yeah. and the bonds wiped out that equity. Uh, and Which the and banks, now, we would have otherwise been making loans, right? With that, they instead they bought the bonds rather than making loans. Which they thought was secure. Yeah, it was the safest thing in the world, the bond <laughs> you know, that didn't default. It just had a major price change. Mm. But when rates were zero, yeah. you had to take some duration risk to make any spread as the bank. Yeah. And so banks banks took, the whole industry took duration risk, but some took more than others. Yeah. Um, and if those, remember that example of how the municipal bond goes down by 55% when the interest rates go up, um, that, that, that's what ultimately wiped out the equity uh, in these banks and put them in trouble. And, and this banks i mean charles schwab bank yeah. is one of the worst is one of the worst hit right now Crazy. and and is probably pretty close to bankrupt on paper which is uh 
not somebody, not a bank that you would expect to get bombs wrong. If anyone should get that right, it's Charles Schwab, but <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's popped up in very surprising places right now. Yeah. Jonathan, as you're out talking to consumers and small business owners, entrepreneurs, a lot of, you know, our client base too, like what is kind of like your, what kind of, what is the conversation you're having with people and some practical steps, uh, things that they can, they can take action on? Because we're hearing different things, right? Mainstream media, you know, saying, oh, everybody's going to get their money back. Even the stuff that's uninsured, you're, everybody's going to be made whole. And, you know, we, we saw a lot of that when 200 plus banks failed, you know, during the, the mortgage banking, you know, other price meltdown we had. But what are you saying to people out there and some tactical things that they can do to protect themselves and be prepared? I guess, like, what can they do to prepare? Or whatever may happen. <laughs> I, I, I guess the first thing I'd say is, uh, number one, it, it's always good. Even if you have a bank that you're happy with, just have a backup because things change. Sure. We, we, have, we have signature customers frantically coming to us right now. We have, we have SVB customers frantically coming to us um, and just saying, how quickly can you open? Because I got to make payroll. And even if I get my money back, I got to, it takes a while to set up accounts and yeah. get registered and, and get online. So it's just, it's just useful to think about banking is just another risk in, in your business. And it helps to have redundancy uh, uh, sometime. Um, and, you know, our bank is rock solid, but I'll even encourage people like, don't, don't count on anything being rock solid. You need, you need redundancy. The second thing is maybe the mainstream media is right and everything's going to get guaranteed by the government. <laughs> maybe it won't. We've seen the last five years has taught us, like, we just don't know. It's yeah. like everything that we've never seen happen before keeps happening. So why do you why do you need to worry about this? This is this is not something that you want to spend your time thinking about. So if you do keep more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars consistently at a bank and it is under one tax ID number, uh, put in place insurance. Go to a, go to a bank like us. There's there's some others that can offer the program. Um, it may not be as seamless on the technology, but put in place a program that we use called Intrify that guarantees these funds, and you don't have to worry about it. You got peace of mind. And hopefully uh, you'll never need it. But if you do, it's nice to know you happen. And there was probably some tech CEOs that lost like two years of their life from sure. the stress yeah. of losing all their funds on SVB until, until uh, they, it got covered for political reasons. Um, I think that, you know, the third thing is just get to know actually who you're banking with um, because these banks are very, very different. A lot of, like Matt said, there probably will be a lot of money that floods into the money center banks, but Chase doesn't care about you if you have a $2 million account. They just don't. They're right. not even <laughs> on a $5 trillion bank or wherever they're going to end up at after this. You're, you're, you're not even, uh, they don't even want to deal with you in the branch. Like they just, they just, they're, they're not going to help you. So uh, I think that the difference is if you, if you're a small business owner, if you have a, a self-directed account where the big banks don't even want those and typically reject them uh, from what we've often seen um, where, you know, oftentimes uh, a, a smaller bank that actually cares about the business is in a better position to help you. Um, and we give, uh, instead of just being too big to fail in theory, um, we can actually give out and out $150 million of FDIC insurance, $160 million of FDIC insurance. I love that. Um, if you need it. I have a, there's, I have about, 10 of the same kind of questions. And I think since we have a, a true banking expert, it'd be perfect for you to hit on these, Jonathan. So one is people are asking, are, do credit unions fall under the same category with FDIC insurance? That's one. Part two is the brokerage houses too. Fidelity, my, you know, um, what, what happens to, you know, my money that's actually invested, you know, in with the brokerage and what about my uninvested cash at the brokerage? So I got like a two-part question with a, um, an A and a B for the brokerage. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, credit so, union and brokerage, man, so, that was generous. That woo! was two questions, not a two-part question. <laughs> so, um, and I'm gonna give a three-part answer on that. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> the, the, uh, 
<laughs> the, so let, let's start off with credit unions. Credit, okay. union, credit unions are insured by the NCUA, National Credit Union something something. Um, but it's it's effectively the same deal. They get the 250 insurance, 250,000 of insurance, same rules, follows the follows the tax ID number. It effectively works the same way. Um, the in terms of brokerage uh, companies, this this is where things get interesting. Uh, you would look at Fidelity and Schwab as the same thing. Yeah, and they would seem like the same thing, but uh, Fidelity is not a bank. And Schwab, Schwab is has a bank, so so they're completely different in terms of how they work. Fidelity works with other banks uh, to kind of park your money at. I think they typically use a bank called UMB um, and some other and some other banks like that. And if you have uh, money being kind of swept there, it may be one of two places. It could be in a fund. Um, it could be in a treasury fund, it could be a money market fund, yeah. or it could be it could be in the bank, like a like a UMB. And if you have more, if if it's on the bank side, you may think you're protected, but you might have six hundred thousand dollars liquid, and that might only be guaranteed to two hundred fifty thousand. So it's something it's something to be aware of. I'm not an expert on brokerage houses. Now with Schwab, it gets. I say on the money market fund, for example. That's not FDIC insured, right? That's not FDIC, insured. not FDIC insured. Not FDIC insured. No, sure. that, 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 that's, that's not FDIC insured. Uh, now, they may invest some of the money in treasuries, which is full faith of the government. But we, we've seen in 2008, some of these funds got locked up for very long periods of time, where eventually people got their money, but it was like three months later, um, depending, on, but depending on the type of that funds. And that's like the three months you rule the money in the middle of the crisis. Yeah. Um, if if uh, anyone that's old enough to, to remember that time period. Um, now with Schwab, uh, they have their own bank. So some of that money getting swept to their bank and some of it's going into these funds and people generally aren't probably paying attention to the difference, but there's a big difference because Schwab Bank is one of the banks right now with very, very low tangible equity. Uh, or potentially even depending on the day with interest rates, negative equity. Um, and and uh, that's why their stock price is getting hit really hard right now. So uh, people that have Schwab accounts, and there's a lot of them, I've encouraged them to make sure that their funds are in like treasury accounts if they're liquid right now, uh, or treasury funds with them that are just custodied by them as opposed to with Schwab Bank. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Isn't Schwab and TD now all the same? Because there's TD Bank also. Do the, the banks probably operate separately, though. I presume. Oh, I don't think they gobbled up TD Bank. I oh, think they. they I thought they just they bought just TD, TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim. Yeah, I thought them. TD bought Ameritrade. TD's TD owned by uh, Toronto Dominion still, I think, which is uh, okay. right. uh, which is a big Canadian bank. And please don't ask me rules on the Canadian insurance. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's where, that's where I, that's where I tap out. I'm not going there. I don't yeah. even want to know Jonathan. The, the, I, can't, I don't have space for that. <laughs> the, the brokerage houses, they're covered. Uh, what is it? The SIPC? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's, I, I get a little bit, I get a little bit lost when it comes to that yeah. uh, insurance. And I think that, I think that's $2 million, but it's not like a, that's an industry insurance program, I believe, as opposed to a government yeah, guarantee yeah. program. Um, so I don't know. You see these small shops go down and they get coverage, but I don't know if that could take an entire Fidelity or an entire Schwab um, and how that works. Okay, so just so everybody knows on the questions, please throw them in. You want in the Q&A, right? And don't yep, raise yep. your hand. We're not taking questions from attendees that way, unfortunately. I mean, we have hundreds of people on. We have almost 500 people on live. We got a lot of questions. So um, so let, we'll just keep pulling some here. Um, Jonathan, you got 10 more minutes. We maybe get a little more questions. All, All right, right, let's see. You good with that, Jonathan? Yeah, about 10 more minutes. Okay. Hey, Tristan, what, throw up the slide on the account apps and stuff so we can hit on that too for those that are on. So we can, there we go. Yeah. Okay. By the way, forgot to give our disclaimer. This is not tax or legal advice. Please consult 
financial advisors or your own professionals when making decisions. That was attorney Matt. That was attorney Matt that had that forgot to come on in the beginning. And <laughs> you know, attorney Matt. He made a special guest appearance yeah, just now. in the middle. And they're like, let's put him away though. <laughs> okay, so let's go here. A little stuff about Titan Bank here. I don't know if you want to talk to this or Jonathan. This we just got a slide here about Titan Bank and some of your um, account opening tools. I know you have a new online system setting up accounts. It's super slick. Um, yeah, I see good. zero fees, free, free, free. 500 bucks minimum account balance. That's very generous. I, I think that the most important thing to know about us is we really want your business. Um, if you're if you're self-directed uh, IRA, uh, LLC, if you're self-direct, if you're a solo 401k, uh, if you're a small business owner, uh, you are our bread and butter. And we've built all of our tools and all of our technology around you. Uh, so we have a very quick and easy application process. We can have your uh, bank account set up in a day. Uh, we can set you up with online access uh, very quickly. It's a really good um, online uh, portal that you can control uh, everything from uh, and, and a great app. If you want to give your accountant read-only access, for instance, you can do that yourself. If you want to set up uh, an accountant or a spouse as a second person to have to approve wires. You can do that yourself. Love it. Uh, we also offer uh, non-recourse loans uh, for self-directed retirement programs, uh, typically for purchasing real estate. And Ryan Hughes uh, runs uh, sales for our self-directed area and also runs uh, that program. So you can contact him at the email attached. Um, and so we threw in the, the links there. So you can just go to directedira.com forward slash Titan bank hyphen IRA LLC and the same for solo 401k forward slash Titan bank dash solo K. And it's right there. It's like, great. Right, you start the application right there, ready to go. And of course there's Ryan Hughes direct contact info for non-recourse uh, loans, which Titan bank also does. Yeah. As well. Just, these are for, of course, like the bank accounts for these yeah. types of things. These are the bank account you might use for a solo 401k or for the IRA LLC. So if you have another type of small business or personal account, so you'll just go to Titan Bank's website directly, not using either of those links. Cool. Yeah. Isn't that right? All right. We, 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 we appreciate it, guys. And the, probably the most important thing about us is you call us on the phone, you get a real person in the U.S. that can help you. And um, we're great on the service. And that's, that's why people ultimately stick with us. So yeah. we'll do some like rapid fire Q and A, and then we'll just throw up this last slide and then we'll, we'll kick it off here. We'll let everybody get that for a minute. So we do this once a year around tax season, typically. So whatever kind of account you want to open up, IRA, HSA, ESA, solo K, maybe a crypto IRA, whatever we have, uh, you're going to do a checkbook IRA LLC or a solo K structure. You can get $150 off your first year annual fees. It's the very best promo that we run. Um, you're just going to put in webinar 150 and that expires right when the, the tax <laughs> deadline hits. So we're extending that uh, to everyone listening in and those that will catch the recording. So just webinar 150, we'll take 150 off and just uh, put that promo code in when you do an account app. And we appreciate that as well. Yeah. And for those of you that are like been on the fence about a self-directed account yeah. or maybe you need to open a new one, go to schedule an appointment with one of yes. our new account reps. Just go to directedira.com schedule an appointment with one of our senior account reps or our managers are on there. I mean, we have some awesome people um, that can really help answer your questions and get your account open, make it easy for you. So um, don't feel like you're on your own for many of you love to just like, you know, to set up your account in your pajamas, eating a bowl of cereal at night. That's cool. Um, some of you might want to do a zoom call or a phone call scheduled with one of our people. We can help you with that too. So cool. All right. We Thanks for the that. commercial interruption. Appreciate that guys. <laughs> Um, Jonathan, where would people find out kind of more of some of the, uh, fees related structure, like for wire fees, or do you charge for ACHs, like anything outbound? Is that on the site or can you talk to that briefly? That's on the, if you go to titanbank, titanbank.com, uh, T-I-T-A-N-B-A-N-K.com, uh, you can see all of our fees there. There's a fee schedule, but, um, to Love cut it. to the chase, we're, we're one of the only banks in the country that give away ACHs for free and including, uh, and a lot of our customers use us for that. So it's very, 
cost effective to move funds in and out um, using that system. Awesome. All right, guys, you got any, got any other questions we want to hit? Yeah, we can, let's hit, let's hit it for like, we'll do a five minute rapid fire and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. Sound good. Yep. Um, Jonathan interested. Uh, thanks so much. Interested in hearing your thoughts on too big. That's my quotation too big to fail and opening overseas bank accounts that are not correlated with Western economies. That comes from Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, I'll, I'll give you my opinion on each. The, the too big to fail, um, everything is till it's not. Mm. <laughs> the, 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 one, the one thing that we've seen is it's like, and I've been living through it, but over the last, especially three years, like everything that's happened, we've never seen before. So yeah. maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't know. We don't know what's going to happen at any of these banks. The government doesn't even understand these banks. And there can be systemic risks in these banks that just nobody's aware of. And then ultimately, you got to deal with. So I guess it's, it's, uh, it's, it's too complicated for any human to understand if they're really too big to fail or not. Yeah. Uh, but it's been an issue. I would be careful. Just my own, my own personal advice um, on the international bank account side. Uh, you need to disclose that on your tax returns. Yeah, I think you put a target on your back unnecessarily uh, if yeah. you're putting if you're putting funds abroad. Yeah, that's it's called an very... F bar, by the way. You got to file an F bar with the IRS, and you're right. Like you're kind of like raising the flag to the IRS of, have I done anything wrong? <laughs> I have a foreign bank account. Look at me. Look at yeah. Me. It sounds cool. You know. It 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 it's yeah. And advisors will tell you there's all these tax savings and things like that. Most of that's bogus, and they're just charging yeah. you a lot of fees. So I would just be um, cautious. I mean, there's ways to get as much U.S. government FDIC insurance as you'll ever need because you can split up into multiple entities if you go over the. Um, the, 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 the really high limits that even yeah. we can produce. So it sounds I like an easier way to do that. With like I, I don't think you're actually things. minimizing your risk. I think you're actually creating all kinds of new risks. And if you're ultimately worried about the U S government failing and not guaranteeing these deposits, we got way bigger problems, um, than, than going on at that point, uh, because they can always run the printing press if they need to. Have there been any foreign banks that have had failures recently? Um, I know some of the foreign bank branches, I think of, was it Silvergate or for SVB? The that Silicon bought, Valley Bank. Yeah, yeah, that bought for one pound or something. Yeah, although I, I, I'm not sure. I, maybe they took over all the deposits. They got bought for a pound. Yeah. Every, everyone told me I should have bid two pounds, but uh, that wasn't <laughs> really a, a problem Titan Bank wanted to take on. Yeah. Uh, there are, there are, there are bank failures around the world and those depositors are often not guaranteed. And that's something great that our country, uh, we, we, we knock the country a lot for, you know, all the obvious issues that we all know uh, exists here, but something that they got right in the thirties and has worked up until now is this FDIC insurance. Yeah. Uh, and it's given us a lot of stability in the U S where other countries might not have had it. I just have a dorky question. Maybe has it, how long has it been 250? It, it seems like it's always been 250. Has it, <laughs> it changed? No, it got, it got changed in 2008. I think, I think okay. it got changed. In, oh, I think if I remember right, cause I, I believe we, I believe we already bought, we bought the bank in the last crisis. Okay. Uh, the, la the last time uh, assets went down. So uh, it, I think it got changed in 2009 and it was a hundred thousand before that. And I think it had been a hundred thousand since the thirties. Up until that point. Cool. <laughs> Good. I'm gonna, I'll uh, find you time to try and get a new question. <laughs> got a lot of interesting crypto ones. We're just going to stay on the topic <laughs> with the banking stuff. Jonathan uh, knows crypto, <laughs> though, you know. But, but he'd love, if you want to hit him up on that, then I'm sure he'd love to love to talk about that. Um, Jonathan, does Titan Bank have any um, uh, Fed-related stress tests that you all have to undergo? We don't because only the only the largest banks in the country, which are uh, it's called the sissy banks that which are basically the systemic risk banks for the United States, um, have to do them now. Um, and I don't know the limit, but it's like over 500 billion, I think, uh, okay. in that range. 
However, you can always go to FDIC.com, uh, FDIC.gov, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. and look us up there and you can pull our financial statements. So all financial statements for all banks um, are public. We don't have any derivatives. It's a relatively easy financial statement to, to understand. Love it. Okay, those links again, directedira.com forward slash Titan Bank hyphen IRA LLC. And that's if you want to do a check Book IRA LLC, take you straight to that application. Direct, I'll do the bank account for yep. it. Yeah. Directedira.com forward slash solo K um, or Titan Bank dash solo K, and that'll take you to the solo K check account. Maybe we can throw that up one more yeah, time. I'll share Tristan. that slide, Tristan, one last time. So remember, this is going to be recorded. We'll be providing these slides as well that'll get up on the site in a couple of days. Um, if you are registered, you'll get a reminder on it. Make sure you're also signed up for the newsletter. You can get it direct at ira.com. You'll get updates about upcoming webinars, everything going on here. We're always sharing great video and content, our podcast episode. Mark J. Kohler just walked in the room here. We're throwing his videos in there. Heck the good yeah. ones. The there good he is. Ones. Come, come join us. You're, you're, throwing, you're throwing in the real videos? <laughs> yeah, we, we throw some more. <laughs> real good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, you know. Every once in a while, we throw those in. <laughs> Um, but we are trying to get lots of great content out to you to help you keep educated and on, you know, up to speed on what's going on. We want to thank tight Titan bank and Jonathan for being on today. We really appreciate you. We know you're busy. We appreciate your efforts for self-directed investors in particular in creating banking products around for them. It's really important for me, for our customers, for the whole industry, really. So, um, but loved all your thoughts today. We appreciate you webinar yeah. 150. Take advantage of that. We know money can be tight. For everybody we're all filling it so get 150 bucks off a directed ira jonathan any uh last uh words of parting words of wisdom you want to bequeath to all of our <laughs> listeners <laughs> i'll use that word I, I i appreciate all the great questions that people had today um you guys do a great service to your um your customers by educating them and and putting out incredible content out there and um if anybody has any questions, you can always look me up on LinkedIn and send a question to me there at, uh, at Jonathan Morris at Titan Bank or just jmorris at titanbank.com and uh, send me an email and I'm more than happy to get back with you directly. I don't know how Love many that. banking CEOs emails yeah, like get, drop, get, get passed around. So you just got, got it dropped on the directed hiring webinar. Well, that's just for so. our special clients, There you right? go. Jonathan, you don't always drop. You, you got a different I email. I don't always give it, but you know, we were we've been yeah. so busy with new customers coming in this week with everything going on. I've been doing customer service calls myself just to just to help the team <laughs> out. It's 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 uh it's That's crazy. Awesome. People are people are looking for solutions right now quickly. Yeah. Well, well thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks everyone for being on. Stay calm. Self